Good evening. More on pay for politicians in just a short while. First, though, it sometimes seems that those politicians can argue about anything, even about the rights and wrongs of a referendum that may or may not happen nearly three years from now. I'm sure you know that the coalition partners, Labour and Plaid Cymru, are committed to holding a vote on future powers for the Assembly by 2011. Straightforward enough, you might think, but let me paint you a picture of what might seem an abstract argument that could be causing some very real divisions right now. It's a row that sometimes is difficult to grasp as the most abstract painting. It's about whether or not there should be a referendum on turning the Assembly into a full Parliament, and whether or not that vote takes place in three years, or sooner, or later. Well, it may seem abstract, but it could cause deep divisions within the two biggest parties. Painting a picture of unity, the One Wales document ties Labour and Plaid to a series of commitments as part of their coalition deal. Chief amongst those commitments is a promise to hold a referendum on giving the Assembly similar powers to the Scottish Parliament and to campaign for a yes vote at or before the end of the current Assembly term. Well, that's 2011. The parties have already set up the All Wales Convention to try to pave the way for that referendum, but there's a possible get-out clause. The parties say they'll also bear in mind what the public thinks. Those commitments are causing some problems for the parties. For many in Plaid, the referendum and its timing is the crucial issue and the main reason why they're in coalition. And many are impatient to start campaigning. I think that we have to be proactive, we have to get out there, um, encourage grassroots support for um, a yes um, vote in any referendum. Um, so I believe that we should be all um, discussing this issue at the moment, despite the work the Convention is doing. But within Labour, the picture is different. Although many are enthusiastic, many others don't think the Assembly has earned the right to more powers and resent being pushed into campaigning for a yes vote. I do get the sense that the, the nationalists and their friends in the Welsh media are lining up for this campaign to take place before 2011 and we're either going to be bullied or embarrassed to having to support it. I don't want the Labour Party to be either bullied or embarrassed. It's time that all of us stood up and said that our members don't want it, our voters are not going to vote for it, and I don't see why we should be signing up to something that at the moment is unachievable. This coalition pledge on a referendum might seem abstract outside Cardiff Bay, but inside the Assembly, it's in danger of overshadowing the coalition agreement. See, we do have an artistic side. Well, we don't. Thanks to our artists, Sarah Price and Clinician High School, for their help. I'll turn my attention to Labour again in just a minute. But first, as I mentioned in the film, there are tensions within Plaid. And I guess the fear of some probably is that the leadership may be more ready to compromise than the grassroots. I've been talking to one of the party's most senior figures, the Llanelli AM, Helen Mary Jones. Well, that's the deal. I mean, that's the deal in One Wales that both parties, and we must remember it was unanimously supported by both parties, rank and file. Uh, that's the deal, and that stands as far as we're all concerned. Uh, there is a level of pragmatism in your party. I mean, I'll quote from uh, something Ian Wynne Jones, your leader, said to me nobody really, when you reflect on the decision, would say, let's have a referendum if we'll lose it. That's, that's saying that there's room for manoeuvre. Well, I think obviously, were the One Wales Convention to come back, the All Wales Convention, and say, you are really not going to win this at this time, it would be absolutely foolish. But I expect, and the party expects, and the evidence is showing, that the more that the Convention does its work in explaining how things work, or rather don't work now, the more likely people are to move to a stronger yes position. So I'd still expect it to happen, but nobody would obviously want to have any referendum that we were definitely going to lose. You, you have to be ready for that public support not to be there at the moment. Is what, something like 46% say they would vote yes in that time. Well, I think the overall trend, if you, if you look, it's about 50% who are saying clearly yes, but you've also got a substantial number of 
don't know. And the task will be, first of all, through the convention, through raising people's awareness, and then when the time is right for a yes campaign, through the yes campaign, to turn those don't knows into definite yeses. The system now is so difficult to defend that I'm really confident we can do that. You raise the don't knows. According to the polls, the don't knows were quite low, around about 6, 7, 8, 9 percent. Now they're up about 22. More people are becoming more suspicious of this institution. Well, no, that's, that's not what's happening, of course. What's happening is that people who were saying definitely no are moving into the don't know category. The yeses are hovering around the middle 40s to 50 percent. And what sort of institution would you want? What sort of referendum would you be asking people ab ab about? In other words, would you be talking about a full parliament, tax raising powers? Well, I think the deal is clear that we're talking about the next stage in, uh, as it's set out in the, the Government of Wales powers. Act. Well, no, that's not, what, that's not what's in the deal. I mean, obviously, what we have to do is to win this referendum, and then we need to talk about a Scottish Parliament and moving further if that's what people want. But at this stage, my understanding would be that what could be put on the table would be what is, is in the... Which is basically a tidying up exercise, giving this body full lawmaking powers over what most people think is devolved anyway, like health and education. So any referendum in 2011 wouldn't be the, the, the last point? Well, I... would be that, another one. That's up to the people of Wales. That's not for, for us to decide. But it, that is absolutely essential to get the current situation tidied up because at the moment it's cumbersome, it ex it's expensive, and the people who need changes in the law, the people who need changes to their services are waiting while we go through expensive, wasteful systems. Uh, you know that times are difficult. People are worried about the economy and all kinds of uh, um, difficult, real, everyday issues. Isn't it difficult to make the case for uh, a, a, a full lawmaking parliament at a time like well, this? Well, interestingly, you might have expected that to be the case, but if we look at what people have been saying in the last couple of weeks, you know, trade union leaders, the head of the CBI in Wales, all saying the government in Wales is doing everything it possibly can, but there are things that it can't do because it doesn't have the power. It's the government in Westminster that's letting us down. I think that because our government is responding so effectively to the crisis, we could actually find people's views that the Assembly needs more powers strengthened because our government is on their side and the government at Westminster doesn't seem to be. It's in the uh, coalition agreement that you refer to. Um, some people have called it a deal breaker. If it becomes apparent that it's not going to happen, is it the end of the coalition? Well, that's not an issue. Um, both parties signed be. up with full support of, 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 our, of our grassroots members. But to we the, know the there are grassroots Labour deal. people who really won't campaign for a yes vote. Well, the government's committed to campaign for a yes vote and, and that stands as far as we're concerned and I don't see any sense from within the government here that that's, that's likely to change or that, that, that there'd be any question of, of any deal breaker because the deal stands. At what point would you, as a supporter of this referendum, as a supporter of more powers, at what point would you give up on it if you saw that public support wasn't going to be there? Well, we're not going to give up on it. It's, it's the absolute right thing to do and it's the right thing to do because the current system doesn't work for the people of Wales. It's not about my opinion or even about Plaid Cymru's opinion. It's about what works to protect and support the people of Wales in this difficult time and the current system doesn't. We need to sort it out. Well, let's turn it around a bit then. You, we've talked about the, the kind of support that you think is there. Why not have the confidence of, of, of your awareness of that support if it is there and start campaigning for a yes vote now? Well, I think there are two levels of campaigning for a yes vote. First of all, we've got the convention doing its work and I'm looking forward to that going up a gear in the new year. It's but supposed to be a yes campaign. Though, is it's it not convention? a yes campaign but it is an information giving campaign and my experience is the more more that people understand about what's going on now, the dafter they think it is, and the more likely they want to have change. We now need, and, this, and it's happening, Camp grassroots building links, beginning to campaign on the ground, beginning to make the case at a local level. I don't think myself that it's time for a national yes campaign because that's going to be running for a very long time and, and I think there's a risk of boring people to death, to be honest. But I do think we need to be building those links on the ground and that's, of course, what Bethan Jenkins and others are already doing. Hello, Mary Jones. Thank you very much. Thank you.